we bless your name. Somebody clap your hands, give God praise. Do me a favor. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Keep that flow for me, musicians. Clapping our hands is powerful. Hold on, hold on a second. Here's the difference. When we go into a theater, when we go into to be entertained, and somebody does something we enjoy, we clap our hands. But the difference between when we come to church and clap our hands, the Bible commands us that we should clap our hands, all you people, and the clapping should be associated with a shout. It says, clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hold on a minute. That means when I clap my hands and I shout, I'm declaring victory before I have it. You got it. Yeah. Declare it, declare it. your hands. Give God another shout of praise. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Aretha. Thank you. Action Chapel Choir. Thank God for the great musician and singers. You know you have a great group of singers, great singers and music. Come on, celebrate your own. How many of you are ready for the word of the Lord? It is the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, a very familiar text that I'd like to preach on. Reading from verse number 18, Isaiah 43, verses number 18. And if you would indulge me by standing for the respecting of the reading of God's word. Our Bible is written from a Jewish perspective. And in the Jewish culture, when it comes to the reading of the Torah, of the Word of God, they would stand in respect to the reading of God's Word because the culture is that when they heard God's Word, they would hear God speaking. Amen? The Bible says, He that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Here begins the reading of God's Word, Isaiah 43, verse 18. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old behold I will do a new thing everybody say a new thing say it a bit louder a new thing I will do a new thing shall you not know it that's a question shall you not know it I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert it says, the beast of the field shall honor me and the dragons and the owls because I gave water in the wilderness. Look at somebody say, you're going to have a testimony after this. Oh, y'all didn't say it like you want to talk to somebody. Look at someone say, neighbor, you're coming out of this trial with a testimony. He says, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Said the beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people. Somebody say, my people. My people, my chosen. 21st verse and last. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Someone say amen. Let us go back to verse number 18 for where I will take my topic. It says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Verse number 19, 
behold. That word behold means pay attention. Somebody say pay attention. I will do a new thing. I want to talk to you today on the subject, make room for the new. Look at somebody say neighbor. Make room for the new. All right, this is what I want you to do this time. I want you to sound like a preacher. And I want you to look at your neighbor because when you speak to your neighbor, you're speaking into their destiny and future. Because your seasons of weariness and tiredness is coming to an end. Let me talk to somebody who believes what I'm saying. What you've been waiting on is about to find you. Look at that neighbor. Say, neighbor. Say like a preacher. Neighbor. Make room for the new. God is about to blow your mind. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that? Father, I need you now to help me to articulate this word with great precision, great anointing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Give us a word that will change lives. Let burdens be removed. Let yokes be destroyed. In the name of Yeshua the Christ, the Son of the living God, we tell you thanks. Somebody say, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Make room for the, the new. I want you to know that everything in our world, everything that God created was created not to be stagnant, but to be in motion and to move. Everything. God did not create things to stay the same. Everything has been designed and created to move. Water that does not move only carry dead things. What causes water move is there's something called currents where we get the word currency and even when we're dealing with money money being held in one place makes it loses its value what causes money to get strong is when it's passed on and it's moved on some of you have bought buildings, bought places, and the place has now gone up in value because your money, which is currency, has to move. Touch your neighbor say, everything has to move. In fact, when you think about science, we think about the universe. Everything in the universe is in motion. Every forces that exist in the universe, everything is moving. In fact, we are on a planet, according to science, called Earth. And the Earth is moving. In fact, right now you are moving and you can't even feel the evidence of it. Because no more, normally when things are moving, you feel the motion. But God created everything to move. And I want to help somebody because one of our biggest challenges as people in this time and season, we hate changes. I remember when I first got married and I, my wife, uh, I don't know if it's like you, but in, in the culture in Ghana, but um, in my culture, I, I best, I, I'm sure it's the same culture because most cultures come from Africa, that every time it comes to the new year, my wife would change the room around just before the new year. Is that something that you guys do? They, like you know, some of you change the room and, and I'd come into my bedroom looking for my bed. And my bed is somewhere else. And the, the thought pattern was that we were entering a new year culturally 
And sometimes you need to change things around. Change things around. And I, 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 I used to think, what was the point of that? Because one of the things as a human being, we are creatures of habit. We don't like change. We don't like change. But God created everything to move, and in its movement comes change. Stars are moving around the galaxy. Everything, planets are moving. Everything God designed for it to move. Nothing should stay the same. Everything has to shift. Somebody call a shift. Oh, somebody shout shift. The word shift there means to move or to cause something or someone to move into a different place or a different position. Are you getting me? Whenever we are talking about a shift, and I believe, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we're in a season of a spiritual shift. Now, not everybody's going to get this, but there are those of us who sense in our spirit that things are not the same anymore and we're coming, we're getting closer to the coming of the Lord but even in that process, God is shifting things, shifting people, shifting mindset and we just came out of a global pandemic and one of the things that the global pandemic has done has shifted the world. And I tell you this, there has been more new millionaires that has come out of a pandemic. And ladies and gentlemen, I was in a meeting before the pandemic. And while oil was one of the most important commodities, when I was in the pandemic, the most important commodity at the time was a mask. I was in a meeting where some people were making millions of pounds, millions of dollars, just by a mask. And the reason why oil was not important for that season, because nobody was driving anywhere. And the most important thing at that time was, you needed a mask. And if you had a mask to sell, you were making money. And if you had an end, 95, I think it was, masks, which was one of the most hardest masks to get a hold of. You were making even more money. I'm trying to tell you just one shift in the economy can turn your life completely in a way of success. And I want you to know that God is getting ready. Oh, I'm feeling this. I'm trying to help myself. God is getting ready to shift some things. And some of you were in a place before God is about to shift you to a greater place. But I'm not preaching to everybody. I'm preaching to those who knows within your spirit something is about to happen. Look over down your row and speak to somebody on your row and say something's about to happen. The word shift, I want to I I put this, I'm going to preach in a minute. The word shift, when we talk about shift, there's some synonymous words that goes along with shift. And the word shift is connected with a word called alteration. Anybody that knows about sewing, it means basically you change the garment, you alter the garment. Somebody say alteration. There's another word called change. Everybody say change. Uh, another word called conversion. Somebody say conversion. Yeah. And there's another word called transformation. I, I, I'm trying to explain to you that, that in, when you alter something, when you change something, it no longer be, it's no longer the thing it was before. Lord have mercy. And, and, and somebody needs to understand that what God is about to do, you are not going to be the same person you were before. And, and, and here's the problem with that. You're going to always have people come and try and tell you what you was before. 
and say, yeah, I know her, I know him. And, 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 and you know, they start talking about all of the negative things about your life in the past. Uh, but, but I'm here to tell you, those kind of people are only doing that to keep you where you was. But God says, I'm about to change you till even some of the people who knew you before are not going to recognize you. Uh, uh, some of the holiday neighbors say he's talking about me no say it louder he's talking about me now here's the problem that most of us have we're creatures of habits we don't like change we don't like change touch your neighbor say honest I don't like change 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 causes me to think differently change causes me to alter a lot and um but there is a side of me that is in conflict. Um, I have a conflict with me. Can I talk to you? Um, in case you didn't know, there's three of me. <laughs> three of me. There's three of me. And all three of me is in conflict with me. Uh, let me help you. The real me, the real me is a spirit. But then I have a soul, which is the seat of my emotions. And then I'm housed in a body. That's complex. All three of me. Now, here's the problem. The spirit that is me comes from God. The Bible says God formed man from the dust of the earth and he breathed into man's nostrils the ruach, that's the Hebrew word for the spirit, and then man became a living nifish. That word nifish means soul. So what activated me was the ruach of God, the breath of God that he breathed into my nostrils. I become a living soul, emotional being, and I'm housed in this body. Now, let me explain something. My body houses my five senses. Sense of seeing, sense of smelling, sense of taste, sense of hearing, sense of touch. I'm connected to this world by my senses. The reason why you know I'm preaching is because two of your senses is inactivated now. The sense of seeing, you know I'm here because you see me. You know I'm here because you hear me. And your senses has been designed to connect you with this world system. Are you with me on that? Now your soul, which is your emotions has been designed for you to look at situations and ponder on it and make decisions uh, based upon your emotions, your will. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody say, I'm an emotional being. Come on, talk to me. I'm an emotional being. H hold on a second. You, you're all too quiet in here. You, I know when I come to impact, you're a different kind of people. I want you to talk back to me. Somebody say, I'm an emotional being. All right, I am a physical being. Now the physical is the two with my, it, it, it's my five senses and my soul is my emotional. But I am first a spiritual being. Now, my spirit, my spirit comes from God. Are you with me on this? Somebody say my spirit comes from God. Now, I want you to read in Proverbs, I want to show you this because I want you to understand a little bit about who you are, and then I'm going to get ready to preach. Proverbs 20, 27, Proverbs 20, 27 says this. The spirit of man, are you with me? In fact, let's read it together. What does it say? The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Let's stop there. What does it say? The spirit of man is what? All right. What is a candle? A candle gives us light. Are you agreeing with that? Everybody say light. So he's saying the spirit of man is the light of the Lord. All right, let's get it break down some more. What does light do? A light brings illumination. Uh-huh. 
it illuminates things. And illumination is where we get the word revelation. In fact, revelation is the Greek word apocalypse. It means to take the cover off and reveal that which was hidden. Are you with me on this? So, let's just do it. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, let's make a statement in here. If I was to take all the lights off in this building, block out all the lights, we would be in darkness. Agreed? You wouldn't see me, neither I would see you, but it doesn't mean we're not here. It just means we haven't been revealed. So what light does, oh God, light brings illumination and it brings revelation. Are you with me on that? Let's bring Proverbs 20 back up now and let me read it with an understanding. The spirit of man is the candle that brings light and illumination and revelation. Making sense? And it searches all the inward parts of the belly. The better translation is not belly. It's a better translation called in the Hebrew, the womb. So what, what God does... <laughs> And what does a womb does, ladies? It's the place of reproduction, right? God says, <laughs> what I'm doing when I breathed myself into you, I gave you my light, my revelation. And my revelation has the ability to go into the reproductive system of your body and begin to give you things, oh Lord here, that you thought you weren't qualified for. Let me preach it this way. What God is about to do in this season, for those of you that does not walk by your senses alone, but walk by the spirit that's in you, you're about to see things that others couldn't see. You're about to get things that others couldn't get. Why? Because you're not walking in your senses. You're walking by revelation. Somebody shout revelation. So now, there's a conflict with me, with all three of me. Here's the conflict. My senses says I'm not qualified for this. My senses says I'm not educated for this blessing. My emotions says... You can't get it because nobody in your family had got it. But my spirit says. Is there anybody know who I'm talking about? Now, now, now here's why you are miserable. Can I talk to the miserable people like me? I know you all to act like you don't get miserable, but there are people in here who are miserable because your spirit is always looking for more. And the reason why your spirit is looking for more, it comes from a world where there's more. Your spirit comes from eternity. Eternity has no beginning and no end. Eternity knows what God has set from before time. Eternity knows the house that you're supposed to buy. Eternity knows the wife you're supposed to marry. Eternity knows the job you're supposed to have. Eternity knows the money you're supposed to have in the bank. But my, my flesh keeps on telling me I'm not qualified for it. But my spirit says, if I just break this thing called flesh, I'm going to have everything that God has for me. Um, that was my introduction. Now I'm going to preach. My preaching ain't long. It's just my introduction. It takes a little while. Now it takes me to the text. The prophet Isaiah is proclaiming and speaking to the people. And the first thing he says, because he's trying to change the mindset, he starts off by saying to them prophetically, remember ye not the former things. 
Because ladies and gentlemen, anything that's going to stop you from moving forward is your past. I know, you, I know, I know, I know, I know, because there are people who the enemy sends your way when you're about to move into a progressive dimension. He sends people who know your past. And one of the things about those people, they like to bring up your past and say, I know you when, and I remember this, and I remember that. And then when they do that, it makes you feel disqualified for what God has for you. But the prophet says, the first thing I want you to do is to get your mind right. Your mind is one of the most powerful source. And what the enemy does, oh, can I preach about this? I need to preach about this. It just came to me. Can I preach about this? Can I preach about this? Can I preach about this? No. You, you, your problem is not your car. It's not your job. It's not your marriage. Your biggest enemy is your mind. Oh, all right. Can I give you a scripture? My dad says, don't just say something without a scripture. The warfare you're having, most of it is not physical. The biggest warfare you're having is your mind. All right, let me give you scripture because I know you're waiting. Here's what the scripture says. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, are not external, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. He then tells us what strongholds are. He says, they are imaginations, things that you think, and you think so much till it... You overthink what God says. And he says, those kind of thinking, you got to cast it down, oh God, and put it into captivity. Somebody's about to get a breakthrough over this side. I don't know who you are. I said over this side. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking on this side. No, you all don't want it. Let me try. I said somebody's about to get a breakthrough. Maybe it's over this side. No, no, no. Let me try. Let me try. Maybe this side knows that there's a breakthrough with your name on it. He said, casting down imagination. He says, everything. Somebody say everything. He says, and every high thing that exalt itself. Watch this, and here's the problem why you can't succeed. Somebody's giving you knowledge. Knowledge is not a bad thing, but it also can be a dangerous thing. Did you not know it was knowledge that got Adam and Eve in trouble? Don't mistake knowledge for the word of God. Some people have information about you, but they don't have the information of God's word over your life. And you got to be able, when folks turn around and say, well, I don't think you can do it. Look at your past. Look at your situation. You ain't educated enough. You ain't got the money to make it happen. You got to say, stop right there. You got to counteract every word that comes against the knowledge of God. Who am I talking to in here? Some of you, you should have been further than where you are, but you've allowed people to talk you out of what God told you. But I've been sent by the Holy Ghost to tell somebody in here, this is your last season of being stuck. Did you hear what I said? It is your last season of being stuck. Somebody say, remember not the former things. It says, neither consider neither replay, neither go over the things of old. Don't allow someone to just keep giving you stuff about the past and you keep going over and over and over. Your past is not designed to destroy you. Your past is information for your future. Can I talk to somebody? If the devil had any sense, some of the things he put you through, he should have never put you through it. He thought it was going to make you worse, but it made you more wiser. It made you more stronger. Remember not the former things, neither consider things of hold. Behold, pay attention. I will do a new thing. I 
will do a new. Uh, yes, I hear you, Holy Ghost. I will. Somebody's going through something, and the Lord sent me here to tell you, I will do a new thing. Oh, God. Somebody's dealing with an impossible situation. God sent me from the UK to tell you, I will do a new thing. I hobo shot will ho manda do he come to the law a new thing. I oh my shot will somebody better help me say it in there. I will do a new I will I will do a new thing. Somebody say make room for the new. Say it a little bit louder. Say, make room for the new. He says, I will do a new thing. Watch this. Now, not tomorrow. Now, not next week. Now, not next month. Hallelujah. Now, it shall spring forth. The word there, Bible is written from an agriculture perspective. So anytime you hear the word spring forth, it means a budding. It means a new season. A new season. It says it will spring forth. And it's speaking about one moment it was a seed. And then the next moment... It turned into a plant. Most of the time you can't see when the seed turns into a plant. It looks like overnight what was nothing turned into something. <laughs> he said, now it shall spring forth. That word spring forth speaks of a suddenly blessing. I don't know who came for this. Somebody say suddenly. One minute you had nothing. One minute you were broke. One minute the situation was so bad. But in a minute, from the minute, God turns the thing around. God told me to tell somebody in here, you're about to enter into your season of suddenly. No, for the person on the balcony and the back, I said, God says you're about to turn, come on choir, into your season of suddenly. Somebody shout suddenly. Suddenly means one minute I was in a situation and in the next minute my situation turned around for my good. Oh yeah, there's a people got it. There's a few people got it. Yeah, she got it. Somebody didn't understand. What you didn't understand, when I said turn around for your good, you should have got up and turned around because God is turning your home, turning your family, turning your situation. God is... Somebody shout, turn it around, God. Be seated. I'm almost done. He said, he said, <laughs> ah, it's just spring forth. It's going to be a suddenly... And the time you eat, reach a season of suddenly, you got to look at the book of Acts. Because in the book of Acts, they were in prison. And then suddenly, there came a sound. And the foundation began to shake. And then doors that were closed. No, gates that were closed. Prison, your days of being prison is over. People try to lock you in and try to stop you. You will not be stopped in this season because I suddenly just happened in the house. And I need about a thousand people to scream and shout like you lost your mind. I suddenly is in the house. Can I preach? Ah. Oh. So the Bible says that 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 that. Behold, I'll do a new thing. It's a spring forth. And then he says, uh, shall you not know it? Because before God does something, there has to be recognition. 
And God told me, I don't want people to recognize by their flesh what's going on. You got to recognize by your spirit. And some of you don't understand why you're in a warfare. Because the demonic world don't want you to step in to what God has for you. But God told me to tell you, it's already done. Uh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming. Somebody holler joy. Somebody shout joy. Somebody scream joy. My joy is coming. My joy is coming. I'm almost done. I'm, 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 I'm feeling this. He said, I'm going to do a new thing and it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? In other words, you got to be able, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this before I move on. You got to be able to recognize what God's doing in the midst of chaos. Did you get what I said? Many people walk away from a warfare that they are close to victory because they did not recognize that the reason why you were in the warfare because the devil was trying to block you from getting what God has for you. Ah. Can I, can I? Ah. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Um, um, come, 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 come. Come, come, come over here. Come over here. Let me just, sometimes people have to see this visually. This is you. This is you. God's given you a mandate. God's given you a word. But you're not the adversary, I'm just saying. There's something behind. Push him. Pushing him. Y'all doing it too nice. Get back, get back. This is warfare here. I don't want you to move anywhere. I just want you to push him. Push him. Now here's your problem. You are looking at who pushed you. But who pushed you is not the problem. It's the one behind. And your problem is you have not learned to see from a spiritual perspective that what you're going through is not the person. You are fighting people when you're supposed to be fighting the devil. You're not the devil. You're the man of God. Ah, Are you listening to me? You can go back to your seat. And that is why you cannot walk in your flesh. You got to have a revelation by your spirit. Somebody say, make room for the new thing. I'm done now. Here's this. He said, I'm about to give you a new thing. It's a spring forth. You shall know it. Shall you not know it? He says, the new thing is, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. And I'm going to give you rivers in the desert. Now, when I read this, I had a problem with that scripture. I said, Lord, this don't make no sense. See, I don't just read Bible. I read Bible and ask the Bible question. I said, God, this verse makes no sense. You say you're going to make a way in the wilderness. You're going to give rivers in the desert. I said, God, what makes a wilderness a wilderness? You can't find your way. You can't call it a wilderness if you can find your way. A wilderness is known by the fact that everything looks the same and you can't find a road, you can't find a way, you get lost in the wilderness. It's a barren place and everything looks the same. And then now I say, God, I'm still more confused because not only you said you're going to make a way in the wilderness, then you say you're going to give rivers in the desert. What kind of confusion is that? Because what makes a desert a desert, ladies and gentlemen, there's no water. So, if it's got water, you don't call it a desert. And I said, God, that makes no sense. Makes no sense. God says, you don't understand what I'm doing. I said, God, what are you doing? He says, it's still a wilderness. It's still a desert. He says, I'm making a way in the wilderness. And I'm giving rivers in the desert. In other words, I'm allowing you to stay in the situation. 
but what I'm about to do is change the situation because you're there. He said, it's still a wilderness, but I'm going to make a way in the wilderness for you. I'm going to allow you to be in the desert, but I'm going to give you water to drink in the desert. Can I talk to somebody in here? God is not going to always take you out of a situation, but God's going to change the situation because you're there. He said, Oh, manda ho shayala mando. Says, we're going to pray in a minute. Because I tell you, what was waiting on you is about to find you. Let me try that again. I said, we're going to pray because what was hovering, you know, there are prayers that you've been praying that has been incubated in the heavens and waiting for time and moments for things to be released. And it takes one word it just takes one word one word that has been released from heaven that will burst open your blessings that some of you have been waiting on for 10 years and God sent me here to tell you as you open up your mouth as you begin to scream and say it your breakthroughs on the way I'm done. Just one more thing and I'm done. He said, he said, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. I'm going to give you rivers in the desert. I'm going to change every atmosphere that's been demonic. Everything that's been designed to slow you down. Everyone that's been praying your demise. God says, I'm going to give you a table that's spread in the presence of your enemies. Ah, your enemies are going to wish they never troubled you. Oh God, who am I talking to? I feel like somebody's going to get a breakthrough. I hear the Lord say, somebody ought to do a radical praise in here. Because he says, your radical praise is going to break through. Your breakthrough, your radical praise. Somebody at the back, shout like it's over. Shout like it's done. Shout like it's happening. Now here, and I'm concluding. He says, after I've made a way in the wilderness, after I've given rivers in the desert, here's what he said. This people have I formed for myself. Who are the people he's talking about? The people who made a way in the wilderness. The people who gave rivers in the desert. The ones that did not remember the past, but was embracing the new thing. He says, this people have I formed, squeezed in the Hebrew, shaped for myself. God says, I'm not blessing you so you can show off on nobody. God says, I'm not blessing you (laughs) and I'm not allowing anybody to bless you because if they bless you, they're going to want to get the credit for it. So God said, this blessing is coming straight from me, Lord. uh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, where's the praises? Where? Where's the praises? Where? Where's the praises? Where's the praises? Where? Where's the praises? Where is the praises? Where is, where is, where is, where is? Are are you listening to me? I'm almost done. He said, this people have I formed for myself. They shall, they shall, not might be, they will show forth my praise. So the Lord told me that I'm about to release blessings in Ghana. God says, expect the impossible. He says, I'm about to do exceedingly, abundantly. Where's my church? Where's my church? I feel it in here. Above, you can ever ask or think, but it's according to the power that works within you. Look at your neighbor and say, work it, work it, work it. Say it to somebody. Say, work it, work it, work it. Say, work that power, work that power. He said, now listen to this. He said, this people have a form for myself. They shall, not might be, shall show forth my praise. God said, I want you to praise me before I do it. He says, I want you to shout before I do it. Yeah. Hold on. I 
told them in the first service how in the middle of a pandemic, we didn't have no money. And people weren't even coming out to church. And there was a building I wanted to buy. And I didn't have the money for the building. I told them, I'm giving you the short version because I got something to add to it. And when I wanted to get the building, I didn't have the money. But there was a friend of mine who wanted to buy our building. This is in my south location. Those of you from London know Brixton, our south location. And I wanted to buy a building. We owned that building then. We were having first five services before the pandemic. And now, I wanted to buy this building in Streatham up the road. But I couldn't afford it. We didn't have no money. Now the people are ready to sell it to me. And I said, God, I don't have it. But I was in a service called the Good Friday service. Friday before crucifixion. And while I was praising God, one of my spiritual sons turned around and said, Bishop, God told me to tell you to go and get the building. Go and do what you're supposed to do. I said, God, but I don't have the money. But God told me, praise me anyhow. I praised him. And guess what? I got something in my mind and I said, let me phone a friend of mine who wanted to buy my building in Brixton and see if I could sell it to buy the theater. It's a 3,000 seater theater. I said, can you buy my building? He said, yeah. I said, how much are you going to offer me? He said, 3 million. I said, I need 4.5. He says, I can't afford that. And he says, your building is valued at 2.6 million. I said, okay. Then out of the blue, a suddenly happened. A person who was a developer all around me picked up the phone and said, I heard you are trying to sell your building and I want it. I said, okay. <laughs> he said, how much you want? I said, how much you want to give me? He said, how much you want? Oh, you got to know how to negotiate. I, he said, how much you want? I said, how much you going to give me? And then he said, all right, I'll give you three million. I said, no, I've got three million already. He said, but your building ain't worth three million. I said, well, if you don't want it, he said, I, I said, I want 4.5. I want four million to buy it cash and 500 to do all of the, the, the legal work. And he looked at me and says, it's not worth it that night. I said, okay, bye-bye. And he went, by, and he went, wait, wait, wait. I said, are you going to buy it? He said, yes. Yeah. He said to me, he said, I said, have you got money? I want to see proof of funds. He showed me, he said, you're going to show me proof of funds. And I said, look at God, I'm going to buy this building cash. And then I said, wait a minute. I said, you're going to buy my building for 4.5 million, but I want you to allow me to stay in the building, my building, which is your building, for two years, free. He said, you're joking, no way. I said, yes, I want to stay in there for two years. And I could see some of the people that was with me from my church looking at me thinking, Bishop, you're going too far. I said, I want to stay in there for two years. He says, well... No, um, I, I said, hold on a second. I said, let me tell you something. And those of you, if you're in the UK, you would understand that bishop who's in the legal, you would understand what I'm talking about. When you buy a building, when you buy a building, okay, and it's empty, in the UK, squatters come in, and these are people who take over buildings, and it takes you three months to get them out. You have to go to court to get them out and pay a whole lot of money. I said to him, three months you're going to be waiting for planning permission or zoning, whatever you call it in Ghana. I said, let me stay in the building for two years because I will look after the building. And no squatters will come in. And it's going to take you two years to get your planning. At least you've got someone looking after you. He looked at me and says, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been in there for a year and July will be two years since I've been in the building. We're getting ready to move into our big auditorium. Oh, God. Look at somebody say, suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. And I thought that was the only blessing that God had for me. But a couple of years ago, I bought some land in the heart of London in the midst of what you call a recession. I bought 24 acres of land. And ladies and gentlemen, I can't give you the whole story, but I was trying to build a school. I was trying to build all kinds of stuff. But guess what happened to me? 
travelers took over. Dr. Say, you remember? They took over our land. And when they took over land, it took me three months to get them off the land and pay. I end up paying, listen to this, over $400,000 to clear the land after they had finished with it. That's how bad when squalors come in. And I was like, God, we got this land. And the other day, I was able, after pandemic, to do a deal, uh, what you call a supportive deal of building houses. I'm about to build 300 houses, four bedroom houses in the heart of London. Listen to this. I'm about to build a senior citizen's home. I'm about to build with a joint venture, not only senior citizen's home. This is London. I ain't talking about Africa. This is where it's hard to do stuff. Uh, I'm about to build a, 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 a sports arena. And guess what? None of it's coming out of our pocket. I did a deal with a joint venture where they're paying for everything. And by the time we finish, we're going to have like something to do with half a billion, half a million, half a billion, sorry, of revenue that my church won't have to rely on offerings anymore in order to do the work of the Lord. I, I feel jealousy in here. I feel jealousy in here. I feel jealousy in here. Bishop, hold on. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, get ready to shout. Get ready to shout. Say, neighbor, your shout's about to change your destiny. Your shout's about to change your money. Your shout's about to change your life. Hold oh. Hold on. Hold on, musician. Bishop, bishop. I know, I know you understand what I'm talking about. Listen to this. How did I get 24 acres of land? Up till now, business people, Christian people are shocked that I got 24 acres of land in the heart of London. I bought it at an auction. I bought it for 1.2 million. And the next day, someone called me and offered me 15 million for it. But I told them I can't sell it because God gave it to me. Now, let me tell you how I got it. Let me tell you how I got this land. My building that I have in Northwest London, I testified about it some years ago. That's in Kilburn. How when I went into this building, I walked into my building in North London. Every time to London, come to um, Kilburn and my building. And when you come into our building, our church building, there's a chandelier. There's only two of those chandeliers in the world. One in my building, the other one is in Buckingham Palace where the queen is. I feel jealousy in here, I don't. When I walked into the building, I didn't have no money, my dear. And when I walked in there, God said to me, if you want it, ask me for it. Didn't have the money, but I heard God. See, your problem is you allowing your circumstances to lead you. You got to do this by revelation. I stood there and I heard God says, if you want it, ask me for it. I said, God, I want it. I only saw the beginning of the building, the foyer. I didn't even see the main auditorium. When I got into the auditorium, it's a 4,000 seat auditorium. I'm walking, I'm looking, and I'm saying, and I heard the devil said to me. When I said, God, God said to me, do you, what if you, if you, in fact, it was the devil spoke first. The devil said to me, John, there's no way you're going to get this building. That's what the devil said to me. Number one, you're black. Like I didn't know I was black. The devil's so stupid. Oh my God, I found out I'm black. He tell me I'm not going to get it because I'm black. And he says, another reason why you're not going to get it, there's no way they're going to give a church a building like this. But in the midst of it, I heard God says, if you want it, ask me for it. And I said, God, I want it. We own that building already from 2007. Now watch this. After I bought that building in 2007, I went on the 24 acres of land. And they were selling it in an auction. I took off my shoes, off my feet, and I walked on the land. Because God says, everywhere the sole of your foot shall tread. I'm about to give it. Somebody's about to get something in here. Somebody don't realize your life is about to change today. I'm here for somebody. So I walked up and down the land. I walked up and down the land. 
ladies and gentlemen, and when I walked up and down the land with my foot, my feet, I then said, hey God, excuse me, this is how me and the Lord were speaking. I said, hey God, come here. I'm talking about the God that spoke to me at the Kilburn Theater. You asked me if I wanted that theater. This time, I'm not waiting for you to ask me. I want this land. It was a Sunday afternoon. I got to church in the evening. And when I got to church in the evening, I told the church, church, I just came from seeing 24 acres of land that I'm getting ready to buy. And I believe God told me, if you praise me, I'm going to give you that land. I told the church, I told you the last time we praised, we got a 4,000 seater. Now when you praise, I'm about to give you a 24 acres of land. That's the land that I'm building and I'm going to end up with half a billion pounds of money for the ministry. The Lord told me to tell somebody he's about to do it suddenly. But hold on. Are you ready? You better play this thing fast. I feel a shout. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Say to your neighbor, neighbor. If you don't want nothing, stay sitting down. Keep your mouth closed. But I'm going to shout till I get everything. your neighbor say neighbor say neighbor say it like a preacher say neighbor make room for the new thing God is about to do something new God scream like you lost your mind your neighbor say neighbor grab a hold of your neighbor by the hand say neighbor if you believe God before the year ends what you've been waiting on God for it's going to manifest make room make room for the new now shout again Yeah. 